Number one says that f of x is um, the function x plus 3 times x minus 4, and g of x is one-third of x plus 3 times x plus 4. The two graphs are shown below which graph represents which polynomial function. Um, so we know that the number multiplied in front of the polynomial will impact um, kind of the width or the height of the function. And so if this one that's out front is a one versus this one as a one third, um, the one third will be wider or a shorter distance from the X axis than the one. It'll actually be one third the distance. So this um, dotted one is G of X and then the solid one is F of X. Number two, for each polynomial function, rewrite the polynomial in standard form, then state the degree and the constant term. So we're multiplying together three binomials here. So I'm just going to multiply together um, the first two binomials by doing um, distribution or sometimes called the FOIL method. So I'm going to do x times x, which is x squared. Then we're going to be getting an x times 3, which is 3x, and a 1 times x, which is 1x. So this 3x and this 1x will give us 4x. And then we have the 1 times 3 here, which will give us plus 3. So our first polynomial when we multiply together x plus 1 times x plus 3 gives us x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then we still need to multiply that by x minus 4. So when we're going to do a trinomial times a binomial, I'm going to put this in um, the box so that it kind of organizes my terms since we get quite a few terms here. And so we need a 2 by 3 box since we're doing a binomial times a trinomial. So on this 2 side, I'm going to put the x minus 4, our binomial. And then on the top, I'm going to put our trinomial, so x squared, 4x, and 3. And then we're going to multiply these in um, to each box here. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 4x is 4x squared. x times 3 is 3x. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 4x is negative 16x, and then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And then we've got some like terms in here for when we um, take these out. So we've got a negative 4x squared and a 4x squared, and we've got a negative 16x and a positive 3x. Let me just move this so we can see that negative. And so this will give us our f of x function when we take this out. So I'm just going to write it over here. So we've got the x cubed. And then negative 4x squared and positive 4x squared is 0. And then we have negative 16x plus 3x is negative 13x. And then we have the negative 12. So there's our f of x function. Now in part B, it asks us to do three and then times the same three um, binomials. So this is really just three times our f of x function since this right here is f of x. So we're just going to have to do three times this function, x cubed minus 13x minus 12, and we'll have g of x. So g of x is equal to 3x cubed. 3 times negative 13 is negative 39, and we have that x. And then 3 times negative 12 is negative 36. Number three, Tyler incorrectly says that the constant term of x plus 4 times x minus 4 is 0. What is the correct constant term? So the constant term is going to come when we multiply the two constants together. Okay, so 4 times negative 4 is going to give us our constant term of negative 16, not adding them. Um, and the 0 is actually going to come from adding together our middle terms. And those middle terms or those like terms are going to come when we do 
x times negative 4 and get negative 4x, and then 4 times x, which is plus 4x. So that's where we're going to get that 0. And another way to look at this is by looking at it in the box. And so if we had the x plus 4 on top and the x minus 4 on the side, here's where those terms are coming from. So negative 4 times negative 4 is that negative 16. And then the x times 4 gives us 4x, and then negative 4 times x gives us negative 4x. So that those like terms are what's going to give us 0, not the constant term. Number four, which of the following standard form equations is equivalent to this? Um, so let's see if we can rule a couple out here um, because I don't really feel like multiplying together four binomials. So let's take a look at um, the constant term because we can see at the end here it's either going to be positive 56 or negative 56. So let's take a look. So we would multiply 1 times negative 2 times 4 and then times 7. So that's going to be a negative since we're going positive, positive, positive times a negative. So this is going to be negative 56. So that rules out a few of these choices. So it's not B and it's not D because of the constant term. So now let's take a look at the leading coefficient. So in this case, it's a one, whoops. Um, and in this case, it's a three. So now we just need to look at if we multiply together all of these first terms, what will that give us? So we're doing x times x times x times 3x. So that's going to be 3x to the fourth. So that rules out a, and we're left with c. So we didn't need to actually multiply everything out to figure this one out. Number five, select all polynomial expressions that are equivalent to this one. So we don't have any like terms here, so it's certainly not going to be a. So let's check these, 5x cubed, 5x cubed, negative 4x squared, negative 4x squared, positive 7x in both, and positive 5 in both. So this one is good. Um, this next one is 5x cubed, which we have. Okay, then it goes to 4x times 2, and 4x times 2 is 8x, okay, and we have a 7x here. So this totals 15x. Do we have that in this equation? No. So this is not equivalent. D um, gives us 5, which is good. Positive 4x, which is bad. We do not have a positive 4x term. So part D is not good. 5 is fine. Let's take a look for a 7x, and we see that. Negative 4x squared, we see and positive 5x cubed we see, so E is also equivalent. Number six, select all points which are relative minimums of the graph of the polynomial below. So remember when it's a minimum on either side of the point, the graph is going to be higher than it. So A is not good because we've got this side is below and this side is above, so that is not a minimum. B, the graph is below it on either side, so B is a maximum. Okay, C, not good. Okay, these two are actually called zeros because they're on the x-axis. D, the function is above it on either side, so this is a minimum. E is another maximum. F would be a minimum. And G would not. G is another zero. So A, C, and G are all zeros. B and E are maximums. D and F are the minimums. Number seven, what are the x-intercepts of the graph? So remember, we can find x-intercepts because they are where the function equals zero. And so when we have all of these factors or numbers that are multiplied by each other, anytime we have numbers that are multiplied by each other equaling zero, the way that happens is if any of the factors are zero. So we're going to split these factors up and set them equal to zero. So this could be zero. It would make the whole thing zero. This could be zero. 
um, and this could be zero. So these are our three options and then we'll solve. So we're gonna subtract eight from both sides here. So then we get three X is equal to negative eight and then you can divide by three and we get X equals negative eight thirds as one of our zeros. This next one will add three to both sides and then we get five X equals three divide both sides by five to get x by itself, and we will end up with three-fifths as our second zero. And then for this one, we'll add one to both sides, and we end up with x equals one as our third zero. So here's all three zeros.